Russia's War in Ukraine by Helen Reagan, Andrew Rain, Jack Guy, Hannah Ryan, Adriana Vogt, Mac Wagner, Melissa Makaya, and Mike Hayes, CNN. What we're covering as the battle for the east of Ukraine intensifies, Russian forces are focused on establishing control over the city of several Donetsk. The general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine said, a regional military administration official said Russian troops have now taken control of most of several Donetsk, but dismissed. Suggestions that Ukrainian troops in the area will be surrounded. European Union leaders agreed on Monday to ban most Russian oil imports as part of a new sanctions package against Moscow. Pipeline imports will be exempt from the sanctions. U.S. President Joe Biden said he won't send rockets to Ukraine that could reach Russia amid. CNN reporting that the U.S. is preparing to approve advanced, long-range rocket systems for Ukraine. The Russians have warned the U.S. would cross the red line if it supplies the systems. Here's what the Donbass means to Putin, and why fighting has intensified in the region, from CNN's Rob Pichetta. Fighting in Ukraine has rounded on Donbass, a sprawling and beleaguered heartland region that has suffered years of conflict and now serves as a bloody stage on which Russia's war could be decided. Donbas blankets much of eastern Ukraine and has been the front line of the country's conflict with Moscow since 2014. But now its people, already scared by eight years of fighting, are enduring an assault even more intense. Russian forces are closing in on the city of Severodonetsk and are making gradual progress in some parts of the region. Some asserts have been repelled by stubborn Ukrainian counteroffensives. Russian-backed separatists held the area as of January 24, 2022. Failures to take Kyiv and central Ukrainian regions in the invasion's early months meant Donbas became the counterpiece of Russian President Vladimir Putin's military ambition. A Russian victory in the region would apart the West but could salvage Putin's war aims, while a defeat could cement his invasion as a historic failure. Either way, it is almost certain to devastate yet more of the Donbas region, a historically and culturally significant place whose proximity to Russia has dictated much of its turbulent existence. Those who have lived in and studied the region describe it as an independent and greedy center of industry that has remained suspicious of outside forces for decades. But the waves of conflict there since 2014 have reshaped and wounded its cities, and it is along its line of contact that both the Ukrainian and Russian military are most dug in, making for a familiar but unpredictable new phase of war. What Donbas means to Putin? Despite its move into independence along with the rest of Ukraine in 1991, Donbas has maintained a place in the psyche of Russian leadership. A famous Soviet propaganda poster from 1921 dubbed Donbas the heart of Russia, depicting the region as a beating organ with vessels stretching across the Russian Empire. Before then, the region was part of the concept of Novorossiya, or New Russia, a term given to territories towards the west of which the Russian Empire had expansionist ideas. Cities like Luhansk and Donetsk are historically places that Russians could see a certain version of themselves, Finland said, and that historical image could still persist inside Putin's own worldview, experts suggest. Observers have often suggested that Putin's desired endgame is to review the Soviet Union in which he first rose up the ranks. 
Anna Makanzu, former director for Russia at the U.S. National Security Concern, suggested that Putin believes he's like the czars, the imperial dynasties that ruled Russia for centuries, potentially called by God in order to control and restore the glory of the Russian Empire. A new Russian assert. Whether the raging battle for Donbas will be the final chapter of Russia's war, or merely its current phase, remains to be seen. But by zeroing in on the region, Putin has brought his assert on Ukraine full circle. The so-called liberation of Ukraine's Donbas region was described as an absolute priority for Russia by its foreign minister Sergei Lavrov. In an interview with French broadcaster TFI in late May, the sectionist conflict in Donbas had been costly but stagnant since the initial surges of pro-Russian forces in 2014. The lines of the conflict barely moved in several years, with trenches running along the point of contact from the southern coast to the Ukrainian-Russian border north of Luhansk. But Russia has made a number of advancements into parts of the Donbas in the weeks since the battle there began. World oil prices closed at highest level in nearly three months after EU deal on partial ban on Russian oil imports, from CNN's Matt Egan. Brent crude oil closed on Tuesday to the highest level in nearly three months after the European Union reached a deal to ban 90% of its Russian oil imports by the end of the year. However, oil finished well off its highs of the day after a new report signaled OPEC could be preparing to finally lamp up badly needed production. Brent crude, the world benchmark, gained 1% on the day, settling at $122.84 a barrel, the highest close since March 8. Earlier in the session, Brent traded as high as $125.28 after initially rallying U.S. crude close at $100. Fourteen point sixty-seven dollars a barrel, down zero point four percent on the day. This comes after the EU forged an agreement on a partial ban on Russian oil imports in a bid to punish Moscow for its invasion of Ukraine. Although new sanctions were widely expected, this move will further scramble global energy supplies. Europe is the biggest buyer of Russian energy, with about 2.4 million barrels of Russian crude getting sent to Europe every day in 2021, according to the International Energy Agency. Somehow, between now and the end of the year, the world has to figure out a way to make up this deficit," said Andy Lipow, president of Lipow Oil Associates. That's why Lipow expects gasoline prices to continue to march higher, reaching its forecast of $4.75 a gallon nationally within the next. Ten days, the national price for regular gasoline hit a fresh record of four point sixty-two dollars a gallon on Tuesday, according to AAA, up fifty-two percent from a year ago. The good news for consumers is that the oil market cooled off after the Wall Street Journal reported that some OPEC members are. Considering suspending Russia's participation from an oil production deal, a spokesperson for OPEC did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Such a move could pave the way for Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and the United Arab Emirates to accelerate the return of production sideline when COVID-19 erupted in the spring of 2020. Hit by the war and sanctions, Russia's oil production is projected to fall significantly this year. That's on top of supply shortfalls within OPEC that have prevented supply from meeting demand. This would allow 
OPEC Plus some maneuvering room to make up for production shortfalls. It will give them cover, Li Pao said. Ukrainian forces are making progress in Kherson and Kharkiv, Zelensky says, from CNN's Mitchell McCloskey. The rescuer inspects a flat where the bodies of civilians were collected from a shelled residential building in Kharkiv on May 31. Ukrainian forces have made progress in the regions of Kherson and Kharkiv, and are holding back Russian forces in. Zaporozhye, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said in an address on Tuesday night. Our defenders show extreme bravery, despite the fact that Russia has a substantial advantage in force and weapons. Zelensky said, "We want all of our people liberated, but it needs to be done with caution." Zelensky also applauded the new sanctions package. By the European Council, which would cut down on imports of Russian oil, as well as suspend Russian propaganda channels and remove Sugar Bank from SWIFT, the international bank messaging system. I'm thankful for everyone who reached this agreement. Zelensky said it will leave Russia to the outskirts of the world economy. Russia will not be able to adapt to 